we hear you? I said, I did. You can hear you well? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, let me turn a little bit. You can turn. Is better. Thank you very, very much for having me here. Thank you for the Southeast Asian Study of Wisconsin University. Thank you to Cairo and the whole team that organized such a smooth and self journey to be here. And, and the most important thing is to have a chance to talk about this topic to you all, the Southeast Asian community. Because back in Harvard, nobody cares about Southeast Asia. <laughs> I was put in the Howard Genting Institute where all of my colleagues are Chinese and they were more all interested in East Asian. So of course, whatever I talk, they're always correct. They never criticize and never challenge what I do understand or not understand about what I'm talking about or studying about. So it's such a good opportunity to be amongst you guys who have follow up about politics and social issues in Southeast Asia that I think your comments and ideas would be a lot more good, good, good gonna be very critical and very substantive for my improvement. Okay, uh, I'm not sure if any of you are familiar with the youth movement in Thailand, but I think more or less, I think you have known that there was something happened, there were many things happened during 2020, 2021 in Thailand, which for me as the one who have observed the parliament, extra parliamentary politics, have been something, to understand something that out of mind that it would happen in 2020. Uh, I have observed many social movements in Thailand for during the past 30 years, but to be honest, nothing is like this. Nothing is this exciting, wide grand, powerful, and have a long lasting legacies to come that we are gonna see in the very near future. So I'm gonna give you just brief introductions about what had happened, what happened, and what had happened during the past or four years. So then some of those who some of you haven't for focus or follow up, please closely have a bit of idea what happened before we jump into the core questions and core ideas at 100% in order to explain our energy <coughs> argument on what is it and what are the consequences that exist in Thailand after this uh, youth movement. Okay, uh, in 2020, right after the Constitutional Court reveals the verdict about the Future Forward Party, which was the party won the election in 2019 in the third row, and they were underdog, they were supported by young supporter, which was very, very surprised for many people, including me. But however, after just one year, the Constitutional Court gave a verdict that they dissolved this party. So all of this member, the committee member, has been banned from the politics for 10 years, and the party has Bench. However, during that time, there were a lot of speculation or speculation or what is going to happen after this, right? On one hand, people will argue that they're going to jump into the street politics for sure in order to mobilize support from the youth power in order to support and going against this. But before they make that decision, something extraordinary happened. The youth themselves jump onto the street. Within hours, there were protests throughout the country. And can you imagine where was the first protest of this youngster in the campus? I bet that you know. Where? In Patani, in the most southern province of Thailand. That was the first protest happened inside the campus. And right after that, within the next few hours, it happened in Tamasad and then spread out throughout the country. Throughout the, throughout the country, it is it's serious, it's throughout the country. In more than 50 provinces throughout the country. Not only inside the university, but also inside the high school, as we have seen this. Countless number of high school led the protests inside their schools. But it lasts about nearly one month that these happen every single day with a fresh mob. Happen just one and two hours, and then disappear with all this kind of prakak and all those. And 
we were not quite sure what's going to happen next because if you remember at that point that was a spark of COVID in February. So when when the emergency <coughs> state was announced by the government because COVID spread out, they disappeared for a few months. And within a few months after the situation better, they came back. And this time it's the, it was different. They were no longer inside the university. They were no longer inside the school. They were on the street. And small scattered network or not network among different school, different uh, university start to collaborate and turn into a small movement in different parts of the countries. And in different parts of the country. And they were very creative, very vibrant. The movement has spread into uh, among the younger generation, the Mount High School students, and they had their own campaign. They even went in front of the Ministry of the Education and have done all this. Wow, I mean, I, it's hard to explain during that time. At the same time, that, 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 that demand is climb up the ladder not only calling for the resignation of the Prime Minister, not only the constitutional reform, not only about the, uh, uh, protecting their fellows from <coughs> state violence, but also about the monarchy reform, which on the 10th of August uh, at Thomasat University, the Thomasat folks announced a 10 reform request to the monarchy and that shocked the whole Thai society, which you all have known that we were very sensitive about the monarchy issues. And the protest, the confrontation escalate. It seems like the state will no longer treat them as a young kids. They become a national threat. So the confrontation between the military, the, author, the security authorities, and the youngster became more intense. And it continues throughout six months, up until December. We are seeing this protest every single day. As those who follow up, I was, to be honest, very exhausted. And I have to follow every single day, every single week, something. And the events always come up with a new form, with a new pattern, with a new ways to express their way, and new group have happened. And I was, to be honest, it's the most difficult thing to follow up during that years for me, because even though know, I have known many activists, but most of these people are new faces. They are all one who I have never ever heard of. They have, they, I don't know where they're from. It seems like for me, I have known things to not think about the people's politics in Thailand when all these things happen. Um, during their New Year's Eve, they are all went for vacation. <laughs> and then they return in January and February. But by this time, they start to think maybe those simple and peaceful protests were no longer function. There were big debates among them, and many groups turned out to be a lot more, not violent, but try to find a new strategy to provoke the situation in terms of the way that several disagree. For example, like, this is the lawyer patents. And the authority put the barrack on as a container in order to block that people don't get too close to the lawyer patents. They never touched this container before. But by in February, they start to pull it down and try to climb and jump away to the palace. So it was the first time that the authorities start using the rubber bullet. And there was a big mess. Once the view of my journalist brain has been shot by the rubber bullet. It may not be that bad, people didn't die, but it was the first time that things like something smell not and then again, the break of the war started because of the cold winter, <laughs> and everybody had to be at home. Uh, everybody seems to be disappeared for quite some time, but then again, in August, three months long up until October, there were this kind of the semi riot. I don't want to use the word riot, but it was the new groups came up with the new militant confrontation and reacts to the state response to that protest. They use a new strategy to provoke, to, 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 to give the state understand that they were no longer able to wait for the change. They try to went into the military camp with where, with our, where, where the prime minister resident were in, in 
and then they use this kind of the uh, of cocktail. They use the the in a big new one to call it slingshot. Ah, slingshot. Yeah, the slingshot and uh, so many things. Whatever they have, but it was a real battle. This round that is no longer like a uh, water cannon, high pressure, or only few of the locker roulette, but this is the real chess. That was the real chess. In the front line, we under, I mean, estimated that there were around only 500 participants, the mm -hmm. active one. Can you guess at how many people were arrested at the end of the stream? 450. Arrest is mean real arrest. It's mean a bit of torture and put in jail. And because they were not a peaceful protest, uh, the human rights lawyer were very hesitant and has a lot of trouble even helping all these folks. And it's become the real criminal case, not about the violating the state emergency of the, the COVID or not about organizing the protest and things. It's become the real <coughs> issues. So it was in a very, very difficult situation. I went there from the very beginning and I interviewed many of them and they were said that we have no fear. We dare to die. And if we arrest, we will come back again. But in the reality, once you are arrested, it's very hard to come back. Particularly, they were very young, below 18. They were not in the normal court, they were in the child court. And you have to go a long, long process before you were able to return to a normal situation. <laughs> so it is nearly impossible after three months of every single night battle, confront with the police, I mean every single night, every single night after dark. They remain there sometimes up until two to three. And the police were very exhausted. And by that time, the only thing that they did to them is arrest and put them in jail. It's not possible just to allow them to, to come back to repeat. So for me, the protest end there by the end of October. Since October 2021, we didn't see anything that much beyond uh, the very radical symbolic protest where the how to survive among the small group of very radical activists focused mainly on the monarchy issues. The question is, oh yes, and even though the protest end, but this year, as you all know, that the result of the election even shows that how the younger generation angry that the future for the move forward party would replace the uh, future for party uh, became the biggest party in the election. They won like a 2,151 uh, that they became the biggest person. So the real question is what and what, how can we understand them? And what were the consequences of all these youngsters in that two years? Of course, in the past, when I first did my research, I wrote a book which is called the uh, Three generation gap between the Cold War generation, white women, and the in between generation. I think we were pretty convinced from the beginning that this is the generation crash. This is the generation generational issues that there were different expectations and they turned into crash. But I combined this argument from the research that I did with the boomer generation and also the Gen X and Gen Y in the yellow shirt. That's the reason that I came up with this argument. But the problem is that, is other youth movement in other countries have that kind of explanation? Because when I observed that during the past 20 years, there were more than 40 protests of younger generation in 40 countries throughout the world. 40 countries. The recent protests in so many countries led by younger generation. You talk about environmental movement, you're talking about the, the democracy, anti watering Arab Spring, blah, 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 they were all younger generation. But how people explain about these youth movement in other countries? I list all of this after I did the literature review. None of them explain the youth movement through the generational conflict. None. <laughs> 
So I have to uh, and ask myself, is what the problem with the argument I have drawn up from the beginning when I start the, 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 the research? So I went through, I, I tried to reconsider, because the argument that I made was from the very beginning, the sixth, the first six months of the protest. So after I review, I try to understand, reconsider what is really is to explain this movement. I came up with this. Um, for me, it's become not only generational conflict. It can be explained, the movement, from the beginning. But as the protests gradually evolve, have dynamics, contest, blah, 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 we have seen that they are a part of this long journey of the unfinished democratization in Thailand. They're not just a younger generation movement, but they are part of this long, 91, his, 91 years history of the long civil war in Thailand. As you all know that the Thailand was the land first landmark is 1931, right? When the Kanara or the People's Party overturned the absolutist absolute monarchy and turned it into the constitutional. Since then, we have seen this battle between the two forces: those who resist to change and those who would like to change. And it was a long battle between different parties. Sometimes they won, those who like to change won, but sometimes they lost. What's about this one? This is a new round. For me, this is a new round of to finish the unfinished democratization in Thailand. On the one hand, we have those conservative elites and capitalists who would like to resist the shame. And on the other hand, we have the younger generation aligned with many other fellows to push forward this change. And I have seen, I, I show you this here, the four, five ideas, and why I found this is a part of the great leap of democratic, new democratic force in the unfinished democratization in Thailand. First of all, they call, their demand is not only the younger generation interest, it's not about youth interest, but gradually after they develop their protest, it's become the liberal and change, which is going along very well. It's very similar to the earlier protest that would like to call for change. And the second is they bring back the earlier Democratic change for changing force, particularly the 1932 revolution, back as a point of reference. We throughout these 91 years, we haven't seen the, the youth, the movement, the social movement, refer themselves as a part of that initial change. We have seen so many issues that they focus on the monarchy reform, they revive their People's Party, they name themselves as their hair or legacy of the People's Party to finish the unfinished mission that the People's Party did in the past but wouldn't be able to make it. And they try to, this is a very interesting one. If one of you haven't known, we have this memorable plaque. On the day of 24th June in 1932, the peaceful parties put this plaque on the street of Rajanam in order to put a landmark that this country have changed into constitutional monarchy and in shape forever. But a few years ago, this word disappeared. And then nobody knows, and in the radio we know that the Conservative Institute took it out from the street. So what did they do? They put the new church. Very funny, you can go to the details. There they show they have this symbol of three uh, finger salute in the plate. And they are the new generation gonna win back and take the democracy back. They put this in the very historical and very spiritual landmark is the Sanam Luang. The people's field that next to the royal palace. And they put it cemented as they came back to recall what People's Party did during the 1932. And for the elite, it was very threatening. Just a few hours later, it was taken out. But they did. They tried to be a part of this linear historical development of democratization in Thailand. They tried to Harry and I, the revival of the 
people, the younger generation, to understand the member of the uh, People's Party were were tremendous. I mean, in earlier generation, nobody seriously cared about what People's Party do as this generation. And a lot, the third is why I think is the part of the political democratization is because they try to understand what happened during the earlier democratic transition. And they try to criticize, they try to attempt to go beyond the earlier state that the earlier democratic sports did and didn't do or mistake, make, did some mistake. For example, they argue that the People's Party in 1932 were too reformist on the monarchy, they didn't get rid of the monarchy, or they used too little power in order to uh, con constrain the power of the monarchy. And for the 14th October, they criticized them as just a liberal royalist. For the 6th October, they <coughs> criticized that they were two, they were, they were two leftist, non-democratic, conservative, and were under the hierarchical Maoist organization. At the same time, they tried to go beyond the battle of great religion and virtue. For them, overthrowing the government of the opposite the opposition didn't make any change. <laughs> Both of them win over one another for saying many times and didn't change any structure. So they tried to go beyond all this early mistake, all earlier that they didn't do or didn't do it well. And they tried to propose the new for the new uh, the new proposal as a structural change. At the same time they didn't confine themselves only among the younger generation. Along the three years, four years, they start to develop alliance with other democratic force who were there before them. Either those who involved in the, uh, the 1932, 1970s leftist, liberal activists, or even the red shirts folks. We have seen countless number of collaboration of the activism between the younger generation with all these people. The very outstanding example that I have is among the lower class youth in the Taluka, in the, 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 the riot. That because the, the, the earlier groups, the white victim or the middle class youngster, they disagree with this kind of the violence and confrontation that the, 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 the urban poor youngster did. So they, they distanced themselves from the beginning. So the lower class youth didn't have support. Who were there for them were only the Red Shirt fellows, the Red Shirt supporter who were there and support the urban poor youngster. So they had, since then, they had developed the very collaborative network, and they were there. And the later organized activities are organized by the Red Shirt were supported by the younger urban poor folks. And anything that organized by the younger uh, urban poor folks at Tarukas, they were supported by, they, 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 the rich would support them. So, so we have seen that they have developed a very profound network with other forces we'd like to shape. At the same time, they institutionalize themselves, not only amongst the social movement, but also they are part of the Future Forward Party. We will talk about this later. And countless number of the, of the younger generation were in a team of the youth wing of the Kulatai party as well, not only in the future forward and move forward. At the same time, they still express themselves in election. As we have seen, the overwhelming victory of the Bangkok government election last year in 2022 were a part of what they try to emphasize that democracy was the means in order to win over this. And the last is very interesting about the campaign on the policy issue that they still keep on campaigning even without the protest. Their LGBT rights, anti-military conscription, liberalizing the craft beer, as many of you have heard that that was a part of their strategy and education reform. And the, the most interesting thing is about the post-movement activism. For me, even though the protest end, but people who participate in the protest <coughs> didn't end there. The legacy of them is also on the post-movement activism. I list here on the daily life struggle that they did, 
which for me, it was fascinating. Our research has done from uh, Adan Hanarai in Thamasar University about the course <coughs> activities that this youngster did were something that is beyond our imagination. Of course, they still have done several uh, school campaigns inside the school uh, anti-corruption and welfare of the student. But if you talk about the boom of the cryptocurrency in Thailand, you'd be surprised. This become a activities among those politically active younger business people. For them, involving in cryptocurrency was a part of the signal to going against the state control. And they were quite clear from the beginning when once they start to involve in cryptocurrency. It was very surprising. Me. Not only this, but also the gaming streaming network. Because <coughs> after the protest and the high school student, they didn't have people to turn to. The game streamer becomes the community, political community among the high school students. That they, 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 the brain singer, the pastor, they don't only the pastor, <coughs> but they become political support. They become the, this, the way it, I, I went through, go through this result of the game casting. They always like symbolize inside of one of the politicians, one of the, and try to debate among the political critiques issue when they play video game. It was, it was, for me, it's beyond my imagination that it's become a part of their life for these high school students. And regardless for the, for, the, for the Korean fandom that they in Thailand, and particularly during the, the, the protest that the fan Korean pop fandom were the strongest mobilization, particularly the financial support. And they still continue about this in banning, in criticizing the there were several phenomena that in the K-pop young, the, the new one who got to enter into the K-pop business and they were the hair of the former <coughs> very conservative great church speaker and they banned her and she had to resign from the, from the ban and return to Thailand even though she invested so many years in, in building up herself into that. So, so they try to use themselves as the pressure group in express their political ideas. Okay, so that was, I understand, that was I tried to explain as an alternative to the, young, the, the generation crash. And now, on the second part of my talk is about the legacy of the protest. Of course, when the protest end, they didn't mean that they failed. In evaluating the legacy of the social movement, there are many other examples of how we categorize the way to ex evaluate the impact of the social movement. But here I'm going to focus on the part of the institute. The victory of the Future Forward Party in 2022 this year for me is not is not like a straightforward as the party <coughs> mobilized the support from social movement. All the social movement institutionalized into the party. But for me, it's very controversial, it's very contradiction, and it's back and forth, twist and turn, between the relationship of the youth movement in Thailand and the political party. And I found this is the four dynamics that I have seen, the interplay under this contradicts, twist and turn. It's moved from online movement to future forward party. And then from Future Forward Party turned into the youth movement. And the youth movement built up themselves into the movements. And the movements was the cause of victory of the Future Forward Party. But I have to, you have to bear in mind that this is not something new. There are so many examples of this political party which have a very have this kind of the very complicated relationship with the social movement. For example, like the Five Star Movement in Italy, they're very similar to the, the Future Forward Party. Even though the leader were not youngster, but their support were the younger folks, and they won election. <laughs> Come third in the first election, and then become the leading parties in the second round of the election. The same thing like in the circle of people of Zelensky in Ukraine is very similar. The phenomenon is mobilizing the support of the younger generation who were part of the winter on fire uh, uh, protest 
And for the Green Party, it's not new, but during the last election, they regained their popular support from the younger generation who want to strike back the social, the SPD, the social democrat. Okay, so what's about this? If you want to understand the victory of the Future Forward Party, you have to understand the very beginning of the youth movement since 2027. It's not something out of the blue that 2019 they won election because they mobilized the support from the younger generation. No, it was not easy. The younger politi the, the political awareness among the younger generation starts since military coup in 2014. And even though there were small groups of the leaderships start the anti-military coup since 2015, 14-15, on the one hand, they were very powerful. I'm not sure if you're familiar with their activities. But right after the military coup, they didn't allow to organize any political protests, right? Not, you cannot gather stay together in public more than five people. So what did they do? They organized eating sandwich party and half sandwich as a symbol of anti-military. And even though just spreading sandwiches, the police were there. So that mean they start to be able to threaten the regime. Okay, you cannot gather five people. We gather four and we read books. And that book is 1984 or even criticizing the book by Jit Pung Sak, Chongan Sak Lina Thai, those criticizing the feudalism in Thailand. And this is one of my favorite figures, Jam. He weighed about, like, I'm not chaining, body chaining. He weighed about 150 kilograms. And he was selected because they thought that he's very big and huge, so the police cannot take him. But at the end, the police took him. <laughs> and I'm, I'm not sorry for those police, but still. And the symbol of the sort of three salute figure that came when they will have a premiere of the Hunger uh, the, the what is the name of the game? Hunger Games. Yes, the Hunger Games was become a symbol since then, not start 2020. It was a symbol of the student activist since then, but. But, 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 big but. For me, as a social actor, as the, as the, the one who are trying to understand the social media, <coughs> for me, yes, they were powerful, simply can draw media attention, but they were very small. And they would not be able to mobilize the mass youth supporters. They were just an, or they, they were just a subculture within, among their, young folk, young fellows. They were just aliens among those in Thomas and in Geelong or the University. They would not be able to push this, to mainstream all these issues. And they were very scattered. They didn't have the mutual agreement, the battle. They would not be able to organize a national alliance among themselves. So for me, I was not quite sure that they were very successful from my point of view. So to be honest, I didn't do any much research on them. <laughs> Noticed that. But then something <coughs> happened in 2015 and 16. This new phenomenon happens. Are, for me, this is the only successful policy campaign among younger protests. In 2015, the military junta government proposed a new state surveillance policy. They call it single gateway. They try to block the inflow of the data from other countries from abroad and then filter those that go out to the rest of the world. And there were hecklism accident uh, hecklism activities happened here. Um, there were the camp firstly there were several campaigns there were several campaigns on Shane Top Hall. And there was not a sign of a big participation. But when they organized the activities to push the F5 to disrupt the website of the governmental office, the, the governmental office uh, website, the first time there was update successfully obstruct five website. Second round, 11, and then 20. 
is our bingo of threes. Within two weeks of the campaign, the government decided to call off this policy. Wow, for me, wow, they did it. But still, for me, so what? They can't, what, what are these young fellows gonna do? For me, they're gonna be just an armchair a cyber warrior. They're gonna be sat down in front of the computer and that's not gonna be make any real change. But I underestimate that. By the 2009 election, these powers turn into ballot box. And once I saw the result, I found out why I underestimate all these younger fellow. They have already accumulated the success experience. They have already accumulated awareness about political issues, and it's turned out to be this success. Of course, there are so many earlier arguments that why the future forward party in the election. You name them, the electoral system, chief of demography, the misguided campaign of the older political parties. But for me, you have to understand the development of the younger folks' political awareness since 2014. Okay. And then, that's the first state. And then the second state is we see that the Future Forward Party are, and the movement have interrelationship. But what are the relationships they have? Of course, right after the dissolution of the political, of the Future Forward Party, we saw this protest. But in the reality, those who organized the protest were those who disagreed with the party from the very beginning. You name them. If you if you name them, those who were the leader of the political part of, of the movement, Penguin Karichibala, and many of you who know him, that was the leader of the Tamasat University, organized the first the, the very radical monarchy reform protest in Tamasat. And on the other hand, we have Fort Hate, who was the leader of the Free Youth Movement, which was the first biggest protest in Thailand. And who are these two? They were a part of, Penguin himself, he was a part of the founding father of the Future Forward Party. But when he proposed the monarchy reform to the party, the party tried to tame down, tried to reduce the degree, and didn't agree to have this monarchy reform and one or two reform as inside, in the highlight in the political campaign during the 19, during the 2019. So what did Penguin of Harit do then? He resigned. He resigned from the party and organized his own political or youth organization. He tried to revive the national, the national assembly of the student union, but it was not that successful. So he went back to Tamasat and organized his own the, the radical political party, which were the major engine to organize the protest later on. For what that he was the young, he was a staff, after he had his graduation, he was a staff at the Future Forward Party in the youth wing campaign in the LGBT issue. But he, he went too far for the party. In his campaigning for the LGBT marriage rights, right, he kissed his boyfriend in front of everybody in the House of Parliament without asking permission from the party. So it was big issue, and the party asked him to reduce his role, and he resigned. He was very disappointed with the party, and started his own organization called Free Youth one year before the protest. So once the party dissolved, these, these two are only examples, but there are so many people who disagree with the party and step out of the party from the very beginning and become the crucial force to organize the <coughs> protest. And when the party were hesitated, were about to hesitate, was in a situation of hesitation to organize the protest after the dissolution, these fellows <coughs> were the one who organized the protest. As we have seen that the protests at the beginning there were evidence or there was the future forward party didn't participate in the protest. What were the position of the parties in the protest? Stand behind the movement. I remember very well, I was in a meeting with the Future Forward Party, but uh, Move Forward, they asked me to give my own opinion about the protest. 
And I asked for their stand. What, what was your stand, the relationship with the party, with, with the movement? They said that we will be behind them. Every time, if they turn their back, they will see us. Of course, for the party, is fine. But for the protesters, they said, what? We have to turn our back to see them? <coughs> they should be alongside of us. Why do we have to turn our back to see them? And this kind of stand look very, very upset at many, many movement leaders. For them, the party was too scared. They're just to protect themselves. They don't want to encounter with other further legal intervention. So, but for the party, they said that it's better to distance from the protest. So the protests have that would stand, and probably they have more legitimacy without the party cooperation. So this, the, all of this, they, they have all disagree all along. The private party only provide the moral support or activities organization, sometimes like they all get help to organize, provide the, the, the stage, the, the, the sound system for the protest in the rural area. But they try not to do anything beyond that. They say no to provide any financial support human right, human resource resource in order to keep this time from the from the part from the protest. So the reaction from the youth movement is distrust with the move forward. Many of them turned it back against the party and organized the protest without collaborating with the parties. And many of them even turned to coll uh, collaborate with Kuhnhai parties. So you have seen that during this stage, there were very complicated relationship between the youth movement and political party. In the meanwhile, if we see this election result of 2020-2023, we will probably say that the victory of the future public party is a move forward party. Should, it doesn't seem like only among younger generation to support them, right? Because if you look at the differences, Water is huge. What the younger generation did in that protest, as I mentioned a bit earlier, that they belonged to very strong and powerful alliance with other political forces. There were the collaboration between the middle class and the lower class youth. There were collaboration with the rancher, the supporter, the anti coup activist, who maybe earlier on the in between either yellow and red shirt. At the same time, they successfully mobilized the moderate yellow shirt leader in support in order to support their movements. So, so it, it was not only the political party themselves that mobilized the support, but those who have been aligned with the younger folks who are a part of this success as well. So when we talk about the victory of the Move Forward Party. We have seen this three strategy that the Move Forward Party are doing, did during the campaign, and that's led them to the victory in 2022. The first, uh, we have to understand that after the protest, the younger generation, they were, many of them, a little bit leader, were very disappointed. Many of them went on a very depression state because they have invested so much energy and time and they didn't make it in terms of policy and structural change. At the same time, the mass, they, they're trying to find other ways to express their political expression. For them, many of them, I, I do the post-protest post, post interview and data collection. Many of them, and I ask that really go to join the protest in the future if there's any youth protest. Many of them hesitate. They said it's very high in terms of cost. It's become dangerous, unlike the, the, the early state that it was peaceful. And it didn't guarantee the change. Many of them moved to the electoral democracy, electoral state, because there's, there's no hope of change for them in only protest only. But they learn that in the election, it's possible to make change, particularly after the 2022 um, Bangkok governor election, that they, they is revived their political spirit, that if they gather together through the political ballot, 
be possible to make change. So, move forward. They were aware that the relationship between the protests were not that smooth. So they tried to regain, win back the younger generation to support their party. First of all, they recruit many movement leaders into the party. Now if you go through all 151 winner in the election, at least 20 of them were the former student leaders in the protest who didn't involve or some were a part of the party before. For example, like this whole picture that I showed is Toto, is the leader uh, of the, the man on the right top. Yes, he's on, he was the leader of the security guard team, the, uh, the what is the name? The, we, the weevil, the we volunteer groups who organized as a security guards around the protest. And Latinov Sinov, she was a very vocal uh, individual participant in the clubhouse criticizing Taksin before, and she's become a very successful uh, candidate. And Chonti Cha Deng Leung, the long history <laughs> uh, female activist since 2014, and others like Putin. Putita is on the sub in no, 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 the, the, the in Chiang Mai, who was who were able to win over Putai in the strong war of Putai. Not only that, also the assistant campaigner, volunteer, and many things hence, they successfully recruited so many young active who were earlier support the protest. And also they have very impressive participatory method methods in re in Build up the interaction between the ordinary youngster into the party policy and also data collection. For example, like they organized countless rounds of hackerism in gathering information, in analyzing the governmental budget. There were like a PhD student from many universities, many conductors, trying to read through their budget, annual budget and interpret all this and provide information for the party to use during the, uh, the, 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 the budget debate. And also they organized this hotline, which was from the beginning, there were only two or three stop, to open the space for anyone who would like to leak any insider information of the rocketing system, any corruption to the party. And now the team is about 20 staff. Because all the telephone ring, all the people watching to inform about the inside and secret information about the government turned into very huge. So does mean people start to get involved and feel that they were a part of all this censor debate. When Ramsey Monroe, the very prominent candidate, really leaked about information about the corruption, about the bribery, they felt, I interviewed some of them, they felt that they were a part of this success. So they successfully in engaging the people to the party in the different angle, leaving alone the online or offline organization during the political campaigns. And this is the very outstanding example that I would like to tell you. I, I will have given this, I know. Uh, this is the caravan, caravan uh, move, move from the different part of the country during the political campaign and all they move from the different part and meet in central Bangkok. And they have this kind of a big van and all the candidate in the area takes turn to give a talk. And every time if you go there during the political campaign, you would feel, and when you interview, these are people who joined the protest earlier, but they didn't go to the protest. They now joined the campaign. And I asked them why they returned to this, but not to protest. They said, it's sad, it's fun is a real energy that had happened during the first stage of the protest. So, so for them, it's made a lot of sense to participate in this kind of political activism. In the Renzi, Kertai did the same. And I asked the staff in Kertai, like, why didn't you, didn't you do this? They said, yes, but Kertai candidate, they, they all were very old, and they don't want to, <laughs> to go to the caravan <laughs> and give a talk. And most of them in the, in the party list, they were all those who who, who, who were the big name, and they, 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 they have been guaranteed to get the position, even though the party will not lose. Okay, um, 
then win over the mobilizing the opponent. This is very crucial because uh, we have seen that in the big, in the in the result of election, many of them wore the moderate yellow shirt. The former voter of the Democratic Party, the former voter of the Parampachara, those military back, and these turned themselves into the supporter of Move Forward Party. I realized that is why that they don't feel that Move Forward Party are the threat, which they used to feel with Future Forward Party. I think the, the party have shifted their campaign a lot in order to, to, to win over those who go against Taksin because of the corruption issue, and they try to tone down all those, the 112. Of course, they still were outstanding. But still, these people didn't care about the 112 issue that much, to be honest, compared to the hardcore and diehard yellow shirt. So they so in a sense, their victory is a part of mobilizing support from the moderate yellow shirt. As we have seen the result of the election, those Uta conservative or uh, popular vote reduced in 9%, Democrat 8%, local Basism in 9%. So all this moved to the future forward party. The last is taking over friends voters. At the beginning, of course, younger folks, particularly the leader, they split among Kurtai supporters and little move forward parties. Many leading figure which I was very surprised, even very leading figure in Dula, they were Kurtai supporter from the beginning. They involved in many activities of the Kurtai. But uh, at the end, during the campaign, they were switched back, many of them switched back to future forward. Because of this, complicated and unclear leaderships and the very clear, outstanding figure of Pita. And the most importantly is the unclear position of the Kurtai party with the pro-military party. That they didn't state it out clearly as the move forward party <coughs> did about being distant from the military back party. So I think these are the part of the reason that why they were they success. So if I'm going to sum up here, the relationship between the future of the party and move forward and the youth movement is pretty love hand relationship. And they, they, the younger water, they do not support. They, do, they don't look at the move forward party as a cult. For them, if the move forward party don't do well, they are more than ready to punish. They can give a reward if they are agree with the policy campaign. And they keep on debate, uh, internal conflict, pressure, and support. It's always back and forth. It's unlike those who used to, like my generation, used to support the Democrat Party. Whatever Democrats do, I always vote for Democrat, but not this generation. So I end here with my presentation. Thank you.